life was not with Christ. It was with, you know, somebody else. And it's like when your, you know, your child has uh, gone to school and, uh, you, you know, your child comes back from school and he has some paper in his hand and the teacher has checked all his uh, papers and everything and they'll say, my boy, what do I see that on the paper? Who oh, said, uh, mommy, uh, before you look at, uh, you know, the mark I got, do you know that there were uh, three other uh, students in my class that were behind me? If you got a uh, 19%, you know, you might have somebody else that got 17% or 15% or 14%. The people that are less than you, don't, they do not justify you. That, that there are people that are better than so-and-so, and better than so-and-so, you can always find somebody that you are better than. You are better than a thief. You are better than highway robber. You only steal privately, and therefore you are better than the other fellow that carries a knife or carries a gun. That you are better than other people is no excuse, and does, that does not justify you in the sight of the Lord. All that this Pharisee could say was that, God, you know me. I'm not the worst man on the street. I'm better than this other person. And that qualification, that I'm better than the other person, it doesn't really justify me. Am I as good as God wants me to? No, I am not. Can I be? No, I cannot be. But the Lord can take the righteousness of Christ that is pleased with. He can put that into my account. And I can say by the grace of God, because he makes me righteous as he who covers me with his righteousness. Then I know that my righteousness is acceptable in the sight of the Lord. Not because I'm better than him, I'm better than her, I'm better than the other fellow. It's not a matter of comparison, it's a matter of conversion. Coming to the Lord and saying, Lord, this is what you have done. And I pray that that faith in Christ will be in every one of us that will make him to impute and impart his righteousness unto us in Jesus' name. Look at this in verse 9. It says to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else. Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a, a, a tax collector. And the Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. He wasn't praying to God really. It was just about to say, oh Lord, did you see that thing I did? Did you see how good I am? You didn't even comment that, you know, this, I, I, I had you commenting about Jesus Christ, that's my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. I about me, I'm here to you. Okay, if you will not talk about me, can I talk about myself to you? Can I give you information that you've not heard about me, you've not recognized about me? Can you think of a church man, a church woman, a religious fellow, giving information to God? Oh God, if you have not taken note of who I am, can I introduce myself to you? Can I give you some information you never knew, you never thought of that this is who I am? And if you do that here on earth, you can still have a chance to be forgiven. What if you become deluded and deceived until you get to the brink or you get to the grave? And then you get to eternity, and then you just say, oh, Lord, this is who I am. And the Lord says, anything more? You say, no, that, that's all I am. And the Lord says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All the Pharisees, all these uh, good, good people, all these nice, nice people, all these people that had this veneer or this uh, thin layer of righteousness and that covers a lot of corruption within, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the only righteousness that will be acceptable on that final day, that I am seen and you are seen in his righteousness, that he does that perfectly and then he gave that to you, the gift of righteousness. And let's see what he's saying here. He says uh, in verse uh, 11, the Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men. You can tell immediately that this is not the way to approach God. When you come, I am not like other men. But think about it. If everybody were like you in the whole world, in the whole universe, will the world be a better place? Think about that. We're talking about this one is bad, that one is bad, that one is evil, that one is evil. We are the only angel in the whole park. But if everybody were like, just like you, the angel you are talking about, will the world be a better place? 
But of course, no, because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It is only this righteousness of Christ coming into our lives that is going to make the change. And if that change is not there yet, it can come there today. It will come there in Jesus' name. And here it says, I thank you. I'm not like other men, robbers, evil doers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice in a week and give tithes of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat upon his breast, beat his breast, and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus said, I tell you that this man, the publican, uh, rather than the other, the Pharisee, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and uh, he that humbles himself will be exalted. That means to start with that all the external righteousness, all the things we have been saying about, I don't do this, I do this, I don't do that, I do this, all that will push aside. And we say, Lord, nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to the cross, I cling. Rock of ages that Jesus can clip for me, broken for me. Let me hide myself in you. Could my tears forever flow and my zeal no respite, no. All this cannot atone for sin. Thou and thou alone must save. It's not Jesus Christ and my good works, Jesus Christ and my offering, Jesus Christ and whatever my religion. Only thou and thou alone can save. That brings me to the second point, the gift of evangelical righteousness. The gift. We've seen the guilt, that's the covering, the thing that covers our corruption internally, but which is not uh, acceptable in the sight of the Lord. Now we talk about the gift of evangelical righteousness. By the, word, by the use of that word gift, you know, we don't earn it. There are some people that, you know, they, they want to work out their salvation. They want to do this so that they can earn salvation. If you earn it, it's no more a gift. But it is when you've done nothing that merits salvation. You've done nothing that qualifies you for life eternal. You just say, Lord, I come just as I am. I come unto you. He knows all about you. Knows all about me. Knows the, you know, bad things we've done. And knows the things you don't even want to remember at all. They're so deep. They're so great. They're so terrible but God says well if you were to earn salvation this will have disqualified you but because you are not earning salvation it's not by religious activity and it is not by the works of your hand it's not by the good good things you have done or the good things you have not done it is by the grace of God remember once again grace means God's riches at Christ's expense and this is a gift that's why Romans tells us we're going back to Romans again we're looking at chapter five and we're looking at verse 17 Romans chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 17 here it says again in verse 17 for if by the trespass of one man death range through that one man it's talking about Adam that is because we are the offspring of Adam then all our sin, all that the attitude of Adam and the guilt of Adam everything passed on to us I say, that's not fear. Well, I don't know whether that's fear or not. But you know, the, your complexion, your color, your brain, your eyes, and everything you got from your peers. And your parents got it from their peers. And then it goes back to your great great grandfather, grandmother. So it's the same thing in the moral sense. You have received the message from our pastor, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, the general superintendent of the Palais Bible Church. It is my wish. That as you listen, you will accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your hearts. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our, our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O oh Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week and the one we are going to listen to the next week by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. If we tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.